Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. He will be back Monday. Let's take a look at the market right now. Everything's moving a bit sideways. The Dow was up a little bit um, earlier today, uh, but everything else is moving a bit sideways. ES uh, down about 0.05%. NQs down about 0.14%. Russell up marginally. Uh, again, we're still kind of seeing a big sideways movement here. Uh, the futures for the Treasury bonds are up as well. Um, really moving sideways. Gold, we're still on a downward trajectory in gold. Uh, the gold futures at 1917 now, um, but over this past week, uh, you can give it some month, we've just seen a really, really cool burn down with that. Silver up marginally at 0.15%. Then we have copper as well, up 0.39%. The big boys in the market, Tesla's been getting slaughtered uh, the past few weeks as well. Uh, really this past month, with some high volume here. Uh, Meta down, Google's been going down as well, and that's pretty substantial percentage. Uh, yesterday, I think we were around the same. Disney hanging out around that $85 mark. We'll see what happens with them. Might be sitting in this kind of range for quite a while here. We're looking at uh, Southern Copper, right, 77.35. Steel Dynamics at 104. Um, it did test that range again if we look in the year to date. Not what it is. Even these kind of like high volume lows here. And we just keep bouncing off that 100 level. It hit the 110 for a little bit and came right back down. So I think we're going to stay in there. Uh, for quite some time now that looks like it's kind of building cause for lower price uh, with with low volume in this range here but we'll see what happens with it super interesting hawaiian electric had uh, quite a big of a move we're up 17 percent today uh, yesterday we were looking at it and it was quite uh you know i mean this this got knocked out but it came back up a little bit it looks like they're going to be able well they say uh, that they'll be able to absorb a lot of the losses with the cash that they have, which a lot of um, investors found that to be positive. Um, again, I still think really not out of the woods yet with this stock. Um, again, any kind of, you know, if we get a higher uptick sometime Monday, anyone who purchased it now is, might just dump it immediately. I mean, it's still kind of risky, right? And if it turns out that any of their components that they had set up uh, had anything to do with the fires, um, you know, they're in for a world of hurt. I want to take a look at the home builders um, because on the year they've done significantly well. So let's take a look here first and we'll go to year to date on this. So this is Beezers, this is a 93% return over the year. They're doing single family homes, multifamily homes, design and sales. Let's take a look here, MHO, same kind of idea, 100% return over the time, over this year. Dream Finders, same kind of concept right here. We're at 110%. And then this is what uh, Berkshire Hathaway added, which was DR Horton. And they're doing uh, quite well also. It's interesting because I want to take a look here. I was reading AP, and they had the average long-term U.S. mortgage rate climbs to 7.09% this week to the highest level in more than 20 years. Mortgage buyer Freddie Mac said Thursday that the average rate on the benchmark 30-year home loan rose to 7% from 6.96% last week. A year ago, the rate averaged about 5.13%. In theory, we might be having some prices coming down, but the demand's still there. And uh, it seems as more people are buying homes, they're going to be able to tolerate, uh, you know, this being kind of like the standard here. One moment. Read through this a little bit more. Uh, it's the fourth consecutive weekly increase for the average rate and the highest since early April 2002 when it averaged 7.13%. The last time the average rate was above 7% was last November where it stood at 7.08. Obviously, um, this can be extremely pricey. And, you know, depending on the cost of the home, which at least in the area that I'm at, I mean, we've seen maybe a slight decrease, but uh, there's still, you know, in St. Pete's a specific case, right? But uh, as it stands on the whole, you know, prices have adjusted a little bit to the downside, but nothing, you know, significant 
uh, that could warrant, uh, just it amazes me how, I, I guess it's people have savings, right? People have money and are able to kind of afford these kind of rates on uh, expensive homes. Um, I was reading something a little bit earlier as well, that some of those savings are kind of running out, but we can get to that a little bit later in the show. Uh, the latest increase in rates follows a sharp uptick in the 10-year Treasury yield, which has been above 4% this month and climbing. Uh, the yield, which lenders use to price rates on mortgages and other loans, uh, touched its highest level since October on Thursday morning. And it's close to where it was in 2007. The yield has been rising as bond traders react to more reports showing the U.S. economy remains remarkably resilient, uh, which could keep the upward pressure on inflation, giving Federal Reserve reason to keep interest rates higher for longer. A lot of people getting into bonds, too. A lot of people getting into corporate bonds as well. Uh, another company I want to look at, Cisco, and we'll talk about this a little bit more when we come back from the break. We only got about a minute and a half left. Um, but, you know, I always try to talk about, let me fix this mic for a second. Probably don't hear all that scratching. You know, I always harp about cybersecurity. Cisco, you know, obviously provides solutions regarding that as well. But uh, they also, they have a dominance in the networking uh, area as well. About 43% market share uh, regarding hardware and kind of the software that goes uh, with networking. Uh, they've done quite well, uh, at least after the last earnings report that they had. Um, Cisco's unique, obviously because I said the 43%, but they're also really, um, they're providing this kind of base and the foundation for AI to be able to transmit data. So, you know, you have all these API calls that are going on, which is what AI is using, you know, in, in order to uh, gain data and uh, kind of learn more about what's going on. And the amount of traffic that is generated from that is pretty huge. And a lot of the infrastructure, uh, at least for these private companies, is going to be built on Cisco. Uh, they're about to roll out some new uh, Ethernet cables, which is going to allow for way faster speed and some more like fault resistance, which is going to be massive. I'm interested to see uh, how this stock does going forward, um, especially as uh, some of these AIs are being integrated into uh, enterprise. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. We have Basil Chapman with us, so you don't want to miss that. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com